Hello. I feel like I normally start my videos in my chair, but I kind of just wanted to start it here today, wearing the finished item so that you can kind of decide if this video is for you or not. I feel like if, I mean, it'll be the thumbnail anyway, but you get a glimpse of what I'll be making anyway, so you can decide whether it's for you or not for you, but obviously use whatever colors you want, use whatever yarn you want, you can do things that I do, you don't have to do things that I do. For this one, I did a kind of thinner crochet than I normally do. So if you have seen my TikToks with like my mohair tank tops, I usually do double crochet. I feel like I don't use the right terminolo ter terminology. I think obviously there's different for American and British, but in my head, single is like the thinnest ones so like i call this single but i think it's actually double and then i call double where there's like a bit more of a gap and then triple where there's like even even bigger stitches um so like on my mohair tank tops i do what i call a double crochet around the neckline or like two layers of it and it creates like more detail at the neck this kind of just more lines the neck um, but you can finish it however you want. You can do a single, double, triple, whatever stitch you want to finish it off. Um, but in this video I show what I call a single crochet. It's probably not the right word, um, to finish it off. But, you know what, I could probably add how to do a double if you need. I don't know. I, uh, no. I do this way to finish it off, but you can change it out for whatever stitch you want. That's what I'm trying to say. I show this one in the video, but I've got other videos where I show other ways of finishing things off. So mix and match, do what you want. Um, I'm going to get into the video now. Oh yeah, and you will need either a knitting machine or knitting needles or crochet hooks, whatever you want. Um, I do this on a knitting machine. You'll need one 100 gram ball of yarn for the main bit. Um, another ball of yarn for the trim if that's what you want to do, um, crochet hook for finishing off, scissors for cutting yarn, there you go, that's what you need. So to start off I'm casting on with scrap yarn, I use scrap yarn because I feel like it makes neater edges, this is a personal preference, you don't have to do it but I would probably recommend just because I really do feel like it makes a difference. Um, I'm casting on 43 pegs because I know this size fits me. Some people have asked like how do you know what size you are and how many pegs to cast on and for me it was just trial and error. I've made so many of these tops now that I'm pretty used to it and I know my sizes but if you don't and you haven't made a top before I would just make some panels, make some test runs and just experiment and find your size. So I knit a few rounds of waist yarn, scrap yarn, and then I move on to my actual yarn. I always ball up some excess before starting with my actual yarn because I then use this to slip stitch and secure the edge when I take out the scrap yarn, but we'll cover that later. So yeah, I just put some excess in the middle and then I start knitting with my actual yarn. So for this project, I'm knitting 80 rows. So it's 43 pegs across and 80 rows down. So literally just spin in the handle now for 80 rows. I make a tally every 10 rows because that helps me to keep count. Um, also a common error that people make with this machine is like skipping stitches at the edge. So you always want to make sure that your yarn is poking under the last peg before you then turn your work. So hopefully you can see it in this clip but yeah, you just want to make sure it's gone under that peg. You knit a couple of pegs further to ensure this. Um, again, maybe just test some panels and get, get to grips with it before actually making a top. So yeah, we're just going to make two identical panels for this top. I don't do any shaping with this because I feel like with this style knit and how thin it is and kind of how stretchy it is, you don't need to shape it because it kind of shapes to your body almost. Um, but if I was... If I was hand knitting this, I think it would also potentially shape itself. If I was crocheting it, I feel like it's a bit more rigid and you'd probably want to do some shaping. But if you want a crochet tank top tutorial, I'm very happy to do that. But with this, I don't bother doing any shaping. I just knit two 
square panels or rectangle panels and then we're going to stitch them together. So to cast off I just do the same as when I began the project so I ball up some of my yarn again to slip stitch across and secure the edge, um, put that in the middle, change to my scrap yarn and then knit a few rows before just winding the handle and it all pulls away from the machine. I find this so much quicker than just picking up each stitch when you have to cast off when you're not using scrap yarn. I'm quite lazy and I just like to be able to wind the lever. The lever? Is that, what, is that what it's called? The handle? Uh, but yeah, I just, I really like this method of casting off and I just think it creates a lot neater edges. So now that we have our panels, it's time to secure the edge. So what I do is I crochet along the last green line. So I find the first loop, pull my hook through and then get a loop onto my hook. And then go into the next green loop, grab some yarn, pull it through, then pull it through the next loop. So this is just slip stitching across the last green line. So yeah, you push through a green loop, pull your yarn through, and then pull that through the loop that's already on your crochet hook. So I show it quite a few times, so hopefully you can get to grips with it, but it's very simple. You're just pushing through, pulling some yarn, pulling it through the loop. For my last stitch on this, I don't do a slip stitch. I actually do a single crochet instead. So I'm showing, don't pull it through the loop. No, no, no. Uh, loop some more yarn over and then pull that through the loop and then do another kind of chain thing. You then cut your yarn and pull that through and that secures it with a knot. So hopefully that was clear enough, but basically you're doing a single crochet and a chain to knot it and secure it and then that won't come undone and then once you're all knotted and secured you just unravel your scrap yarn so you just unravel it like you would unravel your knit but instead of it unraveling the whole project it stops where you've secured your yarn so now we've got our complete panels and we're laying them inside out so that the outside knit is facing each other and we've got the outside the inside what am I saying? The inside of the project facing outward. So we're working inside out and now we're gonna slip stitch everything together. So we're using the same stitch that we used to secure the edge, but this time we're attaching things together. So what I do is I push through. You'll be able to see where we've secured the project that's created some Vs. So hopefully you can see this, but basically that means you're picking up two loops on each side because to make a V there's like two loop bits but you push through one V on one panel and the other V on the other panel then you pull your yarn through and then pull that through the loop on your hook so I feel like the video shows this better than I'm explaining it but we're just going through those V's pulling yarn through and then pulling that through the loop doing a slip stitch attaching the panels together and I do about two and a half inches on each side for the shoulders you might need to do less or more depending on the size of your head. I feel like I've got quite a big head, so I have to leave quite a big gap. Um, but yeah, two and a half inches for the shoulders works for me. And then to finish off these slip stitches to secure it, you just want to do the same thing as we did before when we were securing the ends. So you finish with a single crochet and then do a chain and pull through your yarn to create a knot. You can secure it a different way. If you've got a better way, absolutely do that. But this is just how I do it and it works for me and things don't come undone. So I do it like this. Next up, we want to attach the sides together. We're doing it with a slip stitch again. So hopefully, you already know and you don't need me to explain, but down the side of the knit, you can kind of see these again. And I push through these and then slip stitch these together. If you wanna attach different bits together, go for that. As long as you keep it neat and consistent, it doesn't matter too much which bits you're attaching, but as long as you're not doing like a V and then a single stitch and then like switching it up will make it look messy. So as long as you keep it consistent, I choose to go through like these little Vs, these little like two loops, and that works really well for me, but 
it's up to you and how you want to do it i would just keep it consistent so yeah we're slip stitching along we're pushing through the bees we're pulling through our yarn and we're pulling that loop through the loop already on the hook you could attach it a different way if you just want to sew it together sew it together if you want to do i think there's like a mattress stitch where it makes your seams look almost invisible, which you could do if you want that. You can attach it any way that will actually hold. I just prefer to do a slip stitch. And I feel like showing you guys, it makes these tutorials so much easier to just have one stitch that you need to learn really. Like you need to knit your panel, then you need to know a slip stitch. And that's pretty much it, unless you wanna do more detailing. So yeah, I would do a slip stitch. It's up to you though. So for the body, I ended up doing about eight and a half, nine inches worth of stitching. And then this left about nine, 10 inches for the armholes. So this really depends on your measurements, but that's what fits me. And then the next thing I want to do, this is optional. I really feel like you could leave the tank top here if you wanted it just to be plain green or plain whatever color you choose. But I always like to do some sort of detailing. So for this one, I'm doing a contrast rim around the top and the bottom and i'm doing this with what i call a single crochet but i feel like it's actually a double crochet or like american and english is different but i call it a single crochet because for me that just makes most sense so we're gonna go with that we're gonna single crochet around the top and the bottom i attach my yarn by getting a slip knot on my hook and then i kind of just single crochet it in to attach it it's probably not the right way but it works for me so that's what i do and then i do a single crochet all the way around so to do a single crochet it's pretty similar to a slip stitch but instead of pulling your your loop through your other loop you're pulling some more yarn through and then pulling that through the loop that was probably the worst explanation but basically what you're doing is you're pushing your hook through, you're pulling some yarn through, you're pulling more yarn over, and then you're pulling that through the two loops. So I do it quite a few times. I feel like my actions are much speaking, what am I saying? I can't even speak. My actions are speaking louder than words or just speaking more clearly than my words. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. On my mohair tank tops that you might have seen on my TikTok, I do a kind of bigger stitch around the neckline just for a bit of different detail. But for this one, I just wanted it to look quite tight and I don't know, just like a little contrast rim. I didn't want it to be too detailed, but I wanted it to add some contrast to the project, um, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I just did this all the way around the top and all the way around the bottom. And then when I get to the end of the round, I just slip stitch it to the beginning stitch, do a chain or sometimes do two chains and then pull it through to knot it. And that's all secure. So before the big reveal, I just thought I'd show you some of the finished products that I've made using this technique. And then you can also see what I've made today. Um, so this is also made using DK weight yarn, same process. I just added some ribbing around the neck instead to make it kind of more like a turtleneck kind of thing. And then this one was made using lace weight mohair yarn. And then I did what I call double crochet around the top I don't think that's right, but um, it just adds a bit more like detail around the neckline. So where I showed myself doing single or what I call single crochet, you could just swap that out for that. And then I made this using cotton lace weight yarn um, and again with some more detail around the neckline. And now I can show you what I made today. And this is the finished top. So it's a little bit, not like massively see-through, but like a little bit sheer. So I would wear something underneath it if you use this weight yarn. Um, if you're using quite chunky yarn, I feel like you could go without anything underneath. Um, if you're going lace weight, then I probably would wear, I mean, it's up to you and how you want to style it. I'm here to say in my opinion, but you can wear it however you want. Um, so yeah. That is the top. I really like the trim detail. I kind of wanted to do it in like a blue or a purple to kind of like contrast even more, but I also do really like the white. Um, I was also like toying with doing it around the armholes, but then I quite like how the armholes roll in on themselves and like create that shaping so that I don't have to. So yeah, we've ended up with 
this product design finished yeah this is what it looks like i really like it i love all of these tops i'm a very tank top gal so that makes sense i don't know um i wear them so much in spring and summer and i just think they're so easy to style and so nice and i feel like you can make i don't know what i'm going on about anymore i just feel like it's a very easy design to make also looks great love it um so yeah hopefully this was detailed enough hopefully you've got all the information you need um ask me questions if you have any i've got more videos on my tiktok i think that's everything um so i'll see you again soon hopefully i never know how to say bye so that's it you'd think if you've been on youtube for as long as i have you'd know how to say bye but still don't know